Welcome. Uh, we're so happy to have you here today. My name's Karen O'Keefe. I'm the Italian editor at Wine Enthusiast magazine. And as I'm sure you know, this is Barolo week. So what better way to kick it off than our master class on Barolo. And with me today is uh, the CEO of Fontana Freda. And Fontana Freda uh, was, of course, our European Winery of the Year at our last Wine Star Awards. And this is Roberto Bruno from Fontana Freda. Thank Welcome, you. Roberto. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming. Thank you very much for being with us uh, today. Mm -hmm. So why did I nominate Fontana Freda? There are a lot of obvious reasons. Uh, quality, their commitment, however, to sustainable viticulture is one of the main motives that I really wanted to see them get this because they've been a leader in Piedmont and for many, many other producers in other regions. This is, of course, uh, Vittorio Emanuele II. He was the first king of unified Italy. And in terms of Barolo production, he played a fundamental role. He loved wine. And in 1858, he purchased property called Fontana Freda. It would be the ideal place for him to cultivate Nebbiolo and to produce Barolo. Fontana Freda is not only a uh, winery is also a village and he wanted to build a community all around the wine. So as you know Piedmont is in the northwest of Italy and the name literally translates to foot of the mountains. It's ringed by the Alps and when you talk about the Barolo and Barbaresco area you talk about the Lange Hills around the town of Alba. So these three villages are really the most important. Serra Lunga, Barolo and Castiglioni Folletto. So the 2013, we have their uh, Barolo Comune di Serra Lunga d'Alba, and this has been labeled with a uh, special label because it's their 25th anniversary. They were the first estate to uh, actually make a single village Barolo. The tannins are so much more refined than we would have found 20, 30 years ago and going back. I think the last 10 to 15 years actually, the focus on the vineyards is really paying off now. We have another 2013 and this is the Proprieta in Fontana Freda. There's been a string of very warm vintages lately, so 2013 was a blast from the past. Um, and. I really like these cooler climate Barolos because they do have such age worthiness to them. How has the winemaking changed with Vigna La Rosa 2010, 99 and 82? Until 98, generally we used only big casks for, for example, for the, uh, for the aging, so mm -hmm. Slavonian oak or okay. French oak. Mm -hmm. Starting from 98, we decided to, uh, to mix, mm -hmm. uh, to blend uh, small barrels, especially in the first 12 months of, uh, of the aging okay. uh, and, uh, and big cask in the second 12 months. Our next wine, Vigna La Rosa, is basically Fontana Freda's calling card. And 2010 was another great vintage. That's another classic vintage, definitely made for long aging. Classic for the modern days, it's yes. not the classic uh, mix exactly. of no, you, steer or... Exactly, you know. you're not going to have to wait another 10 years before you yes. can approach yes. this. Because I think if you want to capture this beautiful fruit and the vibrancy, it's going to be, you know, I think it's accessible now. I think over the next few years it's just going to continue to open up. And then I think this will last for decades. 1982 is a legendary vintage in Barolo and in Barbaresco. Back in the 70s and 80s, we didn't have all the great vintages that are coming out these days. So the 1982 was just, you know, it's really down there in uh, Barolo dumb folklore, really. This is part of a very private collection, so we do not have enough bottle to, to put this wine in our library collection uh, uh, catalog. Uh, and this is a, just a special release for today. And this is probably one of the very few times that yeah. I had, the, had the, the chance to taste this, uh, this wine. 82 is, uh, uh, in my opinion, together with 85, 
uh, one of the two uh, most important uh, uh, vintages of the 80s and uh, it's still very vibrant. It really is very much alive. It has great vibrancy, it's fresh, and I'm still getting some nice dried cherry on it, so it still has fruit, um, it's got the complexity, and I, I think this still has years to go. And this is one thing that I, I just love about Nebbiolo is it always changes. Not every grape variety, in my opinion, when it ages, constantly changes or transforms. We're seeing the evolution here of what Nebbiolo can do as it ages. So I want to thank you all for coming. Cheers, everybody. Salute. Happy Barolo Week.